here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. Welcome back to the channel. Here's part two now of this build of this lovely little kit from Ravel. This is the Hawker Hurricane Mark Two B. So, um, really, really nice. We got the fuselage together. Uh, as I said at the end of part one, I basically run some of the black super glue in there just to give it a bit of a backing because the plastic, as you can see, is fairly thin. It doesn't have any sort of bulkheads or anything there, so until we get the bottom on, we just want to make sure that it's kind of backed up and it can take a bit of mishandling. Be careful when you um, do this area back here. I, pe I put a peg on there, and I actually made those parts kind of overlap. You can see the you can see the seam there where the two parts butt up against each other. It actually made them do that. So be careful. You don't want it to dry like that. Uh, if it's actually out of position or whatever, we can easily slit it open with a knife. When we fit the belly on because obviously that area there is not as important as this area here so in hindsight i probably wouldn't have glued down there i probably would have just glued the upper part of the fin and left the bottom loose until we glued the, the bottom in but um i've actually put some super glue in there and i've also let some super glue run down into the tail because one of the big issues with these cheaper kits they don't have they're not the plastic's not very thick and also, it's, it's one of the big problems with the Heinkel 111 wing. You know, my, my buster wing, if you like, that I use a lot. And you can see, if you squeeze it, it just splits open. So get some super glue down in there, and it'll make that joint down the front a lot stronger. It'll back it up and make it less likely to sort of pop open. When you squeeze this in, it wants to do that. So it's a good way of gluing it, because you can squeeze it in the middle, get some glue in there, and then let it close up. It's great for that, but it's not good for, um, for strength. So be careful of that. Another thing to look out for, I only seem to get this issue with this glue here, okay? This is the Migamo Slow Dry Black. Now, I love this stuff. It's absolutely brilliant. But one of the issues I have with it, I don't know if it's static, stringing, what it is, I do not know. I think it's static because I get some of the glue, I put it on here, in here, okay? And when I lift it away, I get this, it shoots out and you can see here, I actually put some super glue inside these panels. You can see some there as well. I put super glue inside these panels to actually fill the ejector pin marks. And it actually made its way, you know, with it down on the bench like that, it made its way around. And you can see it's spattered all over the outside there and all up here. I've had to sand it down and you can see it's done the same up there. So I'm tempted to not use it anymore because Every other glue I've got, it doesn't do it. I can put, I can put some of this VMS glue down in there. Okay, put it on. You've seen me using it in these videos. And it doesn't spatter all over there. And it doesn't spatter all over there. It's almost as though the glue is perhaps negatively charged or something. I don't know. I really don't know how to get around it. But um, I'm not particularly bothered because I think the VMS is actually a better glue, to be honest. Um, I'm really... It's going to take a lot to turn me off of that stuff. I think it's really, really good. I'm going to have to stock up with it. I'll get it from Edit Premium Hobbies. So um, there we go. So we've got a fuselage together. We've got a lovely, smooth, step-free joint down there. So a very slight sand, hopefully. Maybe a line of Mr. Surfacer. That'll be that done. And the front is, is perfect. I mean, I haven't even glued it, but there is no step there whatsoever. It's really good. So really happy with that. And as you know, I'm not gluing this here until I've got the wing box made up for the center because what I don't want to do is glue it all in shape and then find that I've got a twist in the fuselage or something and the wings don't fit. So that's why I'm leaving that. You can see how much it moves. If I hold it at the back, you can see I can move it left to right easily. So be careful of that. So looking in the instructions, no, we don't want that. We want this section here. So we've done 27. You've got this one piece temporary cowl. It's always uh, cow, uh, cow, canopy and it's telling you to temporarily fit it with some tape, which I've done. Um, and I guess you're kind of protecting the interior from dust and everything going in there. No, you're not. <laughs> so I don't really know the purpose of that. I guess it protects the um, it protects the uh, gun sight and it also protects the top of the headrest. So. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, um, so going forward, we're now looking at the wing box, which is a part I've been really looking forward to building uh, because I'm an engineer and I like structures and things. And this is like the wing box, the wheel bay, and it's all going to go in here and, and go up under there and it's all going to look lovely. So here are the parts. So just as I did in the beginning, rather than have you hanging around with me cleaning parts up and everything, we're going to get the parts off the sprues, cleaned up, 
in a bag and ready for you to watch. So there we go. Right, there we are. So that's all the parts we need to take us from 28 all the way up to step 36. So we're going to build the wing box up and I think we're going to paint it afterwards. We've got to mask up these windows on here. But I now have the art scale masking set as you've seen me review. In fact, it's in the box over here. So I need to get those out and, um, and use them. We'll see how those fit in a minute. In fact, we'll do that now. OK, so I've got the um, sets out. We've got a double sided and a single sided set. So these allow you to mask inside and outside the canopy. So you can do the inside and spray it interior green. You can do the outside and spray it cockpit green, uh, uh, camouflage green. With the one sided, you just put them on the outside. And then what you can do is spray the outside cockpit green first and then spray the camouflage colour on afterwards. And then when you look through the canopy from the outside, you'll see green. This is by far the best way to do it, but you need to be very, very accurate. Otherwise, you'll see too much of the interior green when you look in. I'm going to use these. If I get another kit, I'll use them, but I'm going to use these. So we'll get this open. These are from Hannant's in the UK. These are £7.80 and these are £9.80. So for the extra couple of quid, I'd say they're worth getting. We've also got the wheel mat in there as well. I've done a review of them. I've done a full review of the big box that Artscale sent me. But we can see in here that we've got all of the exterior mass and all the interior mass. And what they do, they give us a part number here. So that's the actual part number. So this is this is J109. So you can see here's J109. And then we've got the two windows in there, which the pilot looks through to see that his undercarriage is up or down. So we can see there. We've got the two clear areas and then down here we've got the mass. So it's telling us in here to use mass 23 and we're going to use them inside and out. If you get the the um, exterior only set, you still get four of them. So you still get the masks inside and out, even if you only get the, the one sided set. So we're going to get these off of here and we'll see how they fit. This will be my first ever time using art scale masks. So we'll get them off of here. In fact, I'm going to get my lovely new... Where are they? Where have they gone? Somebody's stolen them. There they are. Nobody's stolen them because no one comes in here. It's daft. Right, so unless it's Jess taking them. These are my new Anise Super Precision Tweezers. I love these things. They're brilliant. They're so sharp. You could They're like a bloody scalpel on here and they're really sharp. But they're going to be really good for picking these out. So, get under there and pick that one out. There we go. And we're going to put that in there. Like so. I need my magnifier for this. We can just place that in there like so. So you get the idea. So I'm going to do this off camera because I need my magnifier and I can't film through my magnifier. So I'll see you in a minute. There we go then guys. So that's the art scale masks. And I've masked up now both sides of those panels. And just with a cotton bud, just rubbing over the, the masks just to make sure they're down in all the corners and everything. And we'll do that as well, just before we paint, just in case they lift. I don't think they will. They're very, very sticky. And they're Kabuki tape, which doesn't tend to lift. It's the vinyl ones that tend to lift, but only if they're in a sort of stressed area, um, like you've probably seen on my Lancaster turret nightmare. So um, let's get on with this build. So we have, first of all, to add these vertical four aft members into our wheelbase. So we've got F108 here and then we've got these two panels here and this one is going to be that one is 106 and then that one is 107. This is often what I do um, for the newer models out there. If you've got parts that are easily identifiable you've got them up through and clean them up. Just so that while you're building, just so it's fresh in your mind, I always go like you read a book left to right. If you're English, if you're Japanese you'll go right to left. But uh, in the Western world, we go left to right. So I put 106, 107 and then lay the parts out in that order. And then I know what I'm doing. So if you've got like, um, if you saw my HK, my HK, sorry, border model. Sorry for the insult. My border model Lancaster, I actually laid all the engine parts out across the bench uh, on a piece of tape with them numbered for you guys. But I laid them all out and then I knew what part was what rather than try and hunt through all the bits. So um, I anyway, waffled enough now. So we've got this part here going this way up. We've got all the sprue nibs cleaned off. No, we haven't. We've still got a sprue nib on there. So I'm just going to use a 400 grit sanding stick from Infini just to get that off of there. 
and I didn't do that one either so I completely lied to you I'm sorry there we go so that's those cleaned up and there's still a spoon on the bottom of there so yeah I didn't clean this part up at all I did the ends because there was some great big spoon nibs on the ends so I've done them but I haven't done any of the rest of it so sorry guys lying to you not fair is it you don't deserve to be lied to so 106 is going on that side we've got to put this with the circular scallops if you look on the instructions we've got the the circular the scallops facing down and this area here pointing back towards us so that one's going to go in there so it's got a, a lug and there's basically a slot in there which is flashed over so we're going to cut that away just like so like that we are There we go. So we've cut that flash out of there. You can see in there, there was some flash. Again, you want to go and see this in more detail. Paul tends to film everything a lot more close up than I do. Um, I tend to have varied viewers. Some like to see close up and then I do close up. And then the people that like to see it further back say, oh, what are you going so close for? So it's one of those you can't please all the people every time. And I can't build two models just to do one close up and one short, one long. So that's gone in there now. So we've got a nice flush fit. Make sure there's no ejector pin. There is ejector pin marks, but make sure there's no raised areas on there. Just go over with a knife. Because I think the fit of all this is going to be quite critical. There's no ejector pin marks in there. But there will be on the back of there. Just make sure there's no little raised areas around them. As they tend to sometimes have a, a raised step. So we're going to hold that in place there. I'm going to grab my extra thin over here, get the mass out of the way. In fact, I'm going to use the quick setting because it sticks better with that. It's very strange actually. This Revell plastic seems to want quick setting. And I'm going to grab a pair of tweezers and give that a squeeze. My fear is if I squeeze with my fingers, the glue might come out into my finger and I'll ruin the surface detail ruin the surface at least so that's gone under there there we go so that's gone in there we can see the glue just oozing out of there so that's fine and then we'll do the same on this side put this one in that one's going to go in there like that and then we can just put some glue in there just to sort of nip it into place and then I'm going to run some in there, just like so, and then give it a squeeze, just to make sure it's gone all nice and square. There we go. So that's that done. For the newer modellers out there, there were some old seams on here. I've basically scraped the old seams away, and then I've got some Tamiya Extra Thin. Make sure you've got most of the glue graft the brush, and just run it over where those mould seams are. Okay, and that tends to get rid of them. So when you paint it silver, they don't stick out like a sore thumb. So uh, we'll probably give it a black primer first. So uh, that's that stage done. So now we've got this clear part and we've got this hot air duct going through. So this clear part is going, as you can see, we've got the two little lugs at the back here downwards. And we've got the curved part of this pipe going that way. So that's going to go in like that. So what we can do here is just grab some extra thin and just put a drop in there and let it capillary along. And then we'll put a drop in there and let it capillary along. There we are. So that's in. And we can see when you look through the other side, you can see the glue's capillary. You just want to make sure it's welded in there. Then uh, there you go. I never worry about using extra thin on clear parts anyway. But um, you can see what happens. You often see me glue clear parts with extra thin and I come in from the side and you can see where I've dabbed it on there. You can see it leaves a mark behind so be careful with clear parts but this obviously is going to be painted so it doesn't matter. Uh, so now we've done that we've masked off our clears as they're telling us to do. So now they're telling us to fit this roof into there. So again we've got this with our semi-circular cutouts there. We've got this that way up with this scoop here facing upwards. So it's going to go back. So that pipe's going in there. And I'm guessing this has got a slide under there. Yeah, so, right. 
these tabs here we've put in, they're part of numbers 106 and 107. So we can see they are forming like a ledge. So what we're going to do, a legend. So we're going to slide those in. Wow, that's tight. So we're going to slide this in underneath those ribs. That pipe doesn't want to go in. So I'm going to pull that apart. There we go. That's how to do it. Right. So if you're building one of these, this is how to do it. I've only just discovered I'm not being a big know-it-all. Um, you, you can't slide. You've got this raised area on this pipe here that I'm pointing to, and that will not go through the hole. So you can't slide it under there. So the way to do it is drop that pipe down into that slot and then pull the parts open and you can get it in under then look. Okay, so that'll go under there. Now, it doesn't want to stay. So we're going to have to clamp it somehow. And what I'm gonna do is only glue this front edge because I'm not sure where this has to end up. When we look at it like this, you can see I'm moving the, oh, hang on, it does, is it clipping into there? What's going on here next? We've got those pieces going in there and then this is going to go onto here like so. So that's going to go into there. That's going to go into there. Okay, so there's nothing supporting this end of this roof at all. Oh dear. This is not well designed. Right, so what I'm going to do is put a couple of clamps. Again, I'm using these little, these are the clamps here. What I'm going to do is clamp that in there. That's holding that up. Okay. Now I need something to clamp it that way. I know you guys go mad when I start clamping things. Okay, so this side is staying in place. So what I'm going to do is put some extra thin along that edge there. And let that weld itself in. I'm going to go to grab a couple of my larger clamps because I don't think a peg will open wide enough. Oh, it will. I'm not turning the camera off, guys, so you can see what I'm doing here because oh, that's too much pressure. I'm just going to get this clamp and just nip it. I'm going to put this back under here to keep the back of that roof up. Because there's nothing. St what I'm trying to do here with the clamps is stop that roof tip tipping down. It's basically the roof of the undercarriage bay. That's why I'm calling it the roof. So we can clamp that up under there just to hold that away. God blame me, this is uh, fiddly. And then I'm going to use this clamp here. And I know you're going to be shouting at me because you all shout at me on the Spitfire all the time with the clamping. Look, I can clamp this with just enough pressure that I can slide my finger through. Or I can clamp it so hard that it's uncomfortable. So, you know, just because it's a clamp, it doesn't mean I'm bloody grunching everything down. I can't have that on there because the clamp's too wide. I'm going to have to put that in there like that. Wow, this is... <laughs> I'm just going to have to glue that front edge. What a strange design. Whoever designed this, this is crazy. Why couldn't they just put a flange around her and have the roof dropping in? It's like very strange. I'm just going to put a drop in there. 
what I'm trying to do is just glue the front edge and then I should be able to flex the back up once it's kind of dry. So I'll leave you there for a minute. I'll let that just tack off and then we'll look at getting the rest of it done. Okay, moving swiftly along, that's glued in now along the front. So that's nice and solid. So I'm happy with that. And as you can see, the back, I can still flex the back to get it in the right position. So I've got these two parts here going in. We've got, where are we, 101 and 100 going in here. Uh, they go in and they point backwards. So this one here, see it's got a little bit of flash on it there still. These are just going to sit in. I'll use tweezers because otherwise my fingers will be in the way of everything. They're just going to sit in there. Okay, and then the end of this tube is going to form. You can see in there, if I show you close up, you can see there we have a little lump sticking out and that is the end of the tube. So what I'm going to do is first of all, get my tweezers in the right place, I'm going to stick this into here. In fact, I'll put a drop of extra thin in there first. Very, very strange design this is. So I'll get a drop of extra thin in there first. Come on. And then let that just bond to the roof. I'm going to do the same with the other side. That's right, I have test fitted this, guys. I'm not, I'm not doing this blind. I've, I've test fitted these off camera just to make sure they fit in there. I'd recommend with stuff like this, always test fit. Especially when you've got a very strange design like this. This is... Uh, I mean, I'm sure it's going to go together beautifully, but um, just get some glue into there. And I think what I'll probably do, if this isn't actually a separate panel, you can see we've got a, a line on there. That's not a mould seam. It looks like it's supposed to be there. Uh, I'm not sure if it's some sort of leather gasket or something. I will have a look. I will do some research. But we'll get some glue in there from behind. Get them in nice and welded in, nice and solid. Okay, and then once they've dried into that position, then we can push these down and they'll pop underneath those little lugs. You can see, you can see that one especially. You can see the, the little lug sticking out of this part where my finger is. You can see it pointing down. So what we can do now is just get that into position. So it looks like that roof has now got to fit in between here and the roof has got to be pushed that way. So I've got some little opposite tweezers here that will probably get in there and clamp. Yeah, they'll go in there and clamp that, let's see, so I can glue that to there. And then just let that dry. The trouble is I'm not, I want to make sure I'm not pushing it apart on the sides. It's very, very awkward. This is very awkward. Right. So I can get a pair of tweezers in there and hold that. We need to make sure we're not pushing the side away. I'm assuming this is all going to go eventually into here. So this this could be our kind of template moment. So that's going to go on there. I'm guessing like that. Okay, there we go. So that's going to sit in like that. Right, so we've got those pins in there and it's sitting behind everything. So it's all looking good. Um, it's all fitting in there beautifully, so that's all okay. If it was wrong, it wouldn't, it wouldn't sit flush on these edges here. So that's all good. So I'm um, happy with that. So I think we'll let that dry. Give that a little pinch. What I'm tempted to do is get a clamp on here again you're going to go crazy but I'm just literally just nipping it 
just putting a tiny bit of pressure on there just to hold that in so that it stays all closed up. What I might do is just put a tiny drop in there and a tiny drop in there just to tack that shut and make sure that it's up against there. I see Paul has done this in his video part six. Um, and I haven't watched it purposely because I don't want to be. It's one of the things YouTubers do. They tend not to watch other people's builds because you tend to get into this frame of mind. that This is how it goes. And um, it's better to have your own approach, I think. So basically, I'm just going to let that dry now. And then we'll get those ends glued in. So these ends of these rods have to be moved into position to glue into there. May use a drop of super glue on them. And uh, that'll all be all be good. What we can do with them is just over bend them so that they fall into position. There you go, like that. So there we are. And in the meantime, we need to do some research and see what colour they are. If those, if those splits are supposed to be there, or if it's just a sink mark, or if, it, but they're actually on the instructions. They've got it drawn on there. So there we go. So I'm going to put some glue on that one now because that one is in position. As is that one, slightly high, but we can push that down now. There we are, we've got our wing box coming together. Right, like I usually do, you know I always look through instructions and see if I can sort of chop things around a little bit um, and change build sequences. What I've done here, I've looked in here, we've got this tank which has gone together. I glued it together and I noticed that had some seams. So I've put some super glue around there just to, uh, so I can sand those seams out. I want to leave that for a few hours to dry before I start sanding it. And then it's telling us we're going to actually fit this, um, this, this unit here is going to fit onto this part here uh, with the detail facing inwards and this is going to be our forward main spar I think so that's going to go in like that that tube's going to go through that hole and then you've got those two tabs are going to go into those two slots like so and then you've got these sort of dovetail things if you like on the outside so it all sort of lines up and it all get clamped together beautifully. But then when we fit this into the upper wing, or the lower wing, should I say, that's going to go in like that. Sorry, wrong way up. That's going to go in like that. But I want to work on this joint here. It gets to go in. I want to work on this joint. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Imagine that's on there. <laughs> okay. I want to work on this joint here. This seam here and with that in place it's going to make life very difficult right way up Nigel come on it's going to make life very difficult indeed for getting to that seam without damaging the detail in there so I'm tempted to glue this box into this lower wing section before I fit that spar and to aid me in doing that I'm going to fit this onto the lower wing so that it's got some rigidity in it now you can see when we turn the page we could jump to step 35 and it's only concerning these two parts okay so we're not actually going to mess up any build sequence at this point but what I want to do is get this glued on here nice and solid and have it let it dry because then I know that this is flat and in its right position if I glue that box on before I glue that on and then it's not flat I won't be able to pull it up so what I'm going to do is actually glue this on here. So what I need to do is clamp it outside here and then clamp it outside here. OK, and you can see that that has gone down nice and firm onto that wing. Now, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be vertical because you can see on here 
if I if I get it square that won't be vertical if I get if I get it square the tab isn't in full contact with the wing so I'm gonna actually glue it so the tab is down and hope for the best and then we'll find out later if you keep watching we'll find out if that works or not so I'm gonna get some extra thin quick setting under there I'm gonna get some under there There we go. And I'm not gluing these here because I can't clamp them yet unless I can get a close peg over and onto there. No. Maybe I'll clamp it that way. The trouble is then you see I'm pulling it over so it's very difficult to clamp that area there. Oh there we go. That's not pulling it over. So what I'm doing here is pulling the the spar back so it's fully contacting on that tab and then clamping it and then it doesn't pull it over. You can see you can see there that tab is in full contact with the lower wing so I can get some glue in there now and hopefully this will all work out nice there's something I don't understand I don't know why Ravel have put all this beautiful rivet detail on here all the ribbon rivet detail on there when you put this box in all that gets covered up you're not going to see any of that at all so unless you know they're giving people who want to make dioramas a shout or something I don't know but there's no detail on the back of there so I don't see the point in having the detail on there and I definitely got the right way around because the tabs go over those holes at the back. So I honestly don't know why they've got all that detail there. Unless perhaps it can be seen down through the cockpit. Maybe that's what it is. Yes, that is what it is because they haven't carried the detail on. So it can be seen through the cockpit. So, well, you can only see the bloody seat, let alone the bottom. So that's why they've done that. I'm going to run some glue along there as well, actually. So that'll have that wing all nice and strong then, that lower wing section will be nice and strong. And, and this, I know this lower wing will be nice and flat and we can get that in. And then I can work on that seam and then add that spar afterwards. Add that spar afterwards. And, um, and that way I can get to that seam. That's basically what I'm trying to do. Is be able to get this in here. I can put it in actually because those clamps don't get in the way. I can put that in there, clamp it down, let the glue dry. Sorry, it goes behind those pins. Clamp it down, let the glue dry, and then I will be able to work on those seams unhindered by anything being in the way there. So I'm going to get that done off camera, and then I'll come back when that's all done. Okay, so I lied. I said I was going to get this all glued up together and filled and everything, I'll come back and show you. But um, something I've realised is once you get this in here, once you get that pipe to go in that hole, and once you get this all fitted, it's going to be impossible to get paint up into this area, you know, sort of into the wheel bay. So what I've done is I have painted the back of the wheel bay, and I've painted this area all around here. Okay, and I had some paint left over, so I painted down in there, and I also put some over that tank. I've actually dealt dealt with the seams on that tank and I fitted the tank to this bulkhead or a spar and then painted up around there as well so once we can glue that on without having to paint again and then what we'll do is we'll give that a final clean up and then paint it all once it's in but um I just wanted to do that to make sure that when we get this glued in that we uh don't have any grey plastic showing I mean it wouldn't really matter if you remember on my Spitfire I said I had to do it and I forgot and you can't see any grey plastic so not to worry so now I need to get this all clamped up Make sure this is all clamped in good and tight in its proper position and then we'll um we'll get it glued up so all i'm going to do is use some pegs and clamp across there and clamp that down into there i'm going to use a peg here and get that clamped in there and then i'm going to put a clamp on here again don't worry it's not mega pressure and i'm just going to clamp apart please I'm going to clamp the B 
bay back to make sure it's up against those pegs and then I'm going to get a couple of closed pegs and just make sure that the front edges of this wheel bay are clamped to the bottom of the wing here. Okay, so what we want to do now without the clamps coming off, we want to get the actual bay glued in to the bottom of the wing. So what we need to do is get our extra thin and initially we'll just do the back end because we know that's in the right position. It's into those little locating holes. I'm just going to drop some glue in there and let it capillary along. It was literally painted 10 minutes ago so the paint is still soft enough that it's going to penetrate it and I can see here I've got an issue with it wanting to pull away from there. So I'm going to have to somehow get in here. It's Clamp City again. This is going to get people going. I know it is. I think you've distorted your model. And uh, we're going to clamp that together like that just to make sure that stays glued together there. So I know they're big clamps, but there's no pressure on this. It's just it's just like literally finger pressure. But it's better than me holding it. And I'm also going to put some glue on there. Here we go. So we've got the detail there we can sort of see from the cockpit. I'm not sure if this top of this wing should be green or silver. I think it's probably silver because they would have built the wing box and then bolted it up. So I'm going to leave it silver. I was going to do it green, but I've done this area all in here silver. And then when we look down through, you can see I've taken the canopy off. You can't really see down in there at all anyway. So it's all so dark. So I'm not going to really worry about it too much. But if you remember, the object of the exercise here is to get this glued into here, get it all firmly fitted and all fixed in place. So we'll get some glue into there, just like so. And we'll get some into there, just like so, so that I can get on and work on that seam on the forward edge of the wheel bay. So that it all looks lovely and like one instead of bits of plastic. So what I'm going to do here, so I can get in there, is grab, squeeze that wheel bay down. And then get some glue in there. We want this to be nice and solid. We don't want any cracking or anything or any floppy joints. Nothing worse than a floppy joint, is there? So we'll get that in there like that. And then just get that clamp back on there. That'll hold all that down. And there we go. So we'll just let that dry. And I think what I'll probably do is once this glue is dry, I'll back this up with some super glue in behind because you can see we've got a gap around those radius parts where the undercarriage legs go. And uh, what we can do then is get that all filled in. So we'd probably use super glue in those gaps and then probably a final just brushing over with Mr. Surfacer. As I say, I'll come back and show you when I've done all that. I've done enough videos about dealing with gaps and seams and you don't need to cover it in every single one. So we're going to leave that now to dry off overnight because it's like midnight and then uh, we'll come back and have a look tomorrow. In the meantime, I'm going to put this canopy back on that cockpit. It looks lovely, doesn't it? It's lovely in there with the belts and everything. So I'm going to oops, pull the fuselage apart. There we go. Let's tape that back together. So we'll put the canopy on. What have I done here? I've got the tape all mixed up. So we can stick the canopy on. That'll prevent the interior getting dusty. As I said, I don't really see the point. But uh, I want to deal with that seam on the back as well. I don't know long there. But we're going to leave that as long as we can because as we all know the solvents in the glue will take a while to come out. Put that on that. There we go. That's on there to protect the seat. So there we are. And I need to replace that bit of tape on there. And then uh, and then I'll see you when that's all done. Okay, so there we go. There's the wing box all built up. Let's get the light a bit better for you. Here we are. So um, you see I've done that edge down there. That's all uh, nice and smooth now and got the, the gap away from there. Uh, so now it just needs to be, once the glue's all dried and everything, we'll take the pegs off and we'll give it a blow over. This area down in here, where can I find a pointy thing? This area down here, these parts here, 100 and 101, across there, they've got like that line in them. They're actually leather gaiters, so we'll paint those in leather brown once we've done the uh, painting in silver and everything. And we mustn't forget to remove our masks either. So, 
with that done, with that drying, we can put that to one side. We've got our little um, cylinders here, these actuators. They're going to be painted with like a chrome colour and a green, so we'll just pop them in afterwards. Uh, I'm a little bit unsure. They've got an arrow here showing where this actuator goes, and it's just pointing to nothing. If we go to the back of the manual where we're fitting the undercarriage, oh, where is it? Come on, I should have marked it, shouldn't I? Um, again, it's a very, very... That's the last bloody page I pick up. Um, you can see these actuators, they're just sitting there in the middle of nowhere. So I don't know where they're going to contact or, or what they're going to do. But they're on square lugs, so we'll just put them in and have them sit in there. Um, I've been looking at the undercarriage legs and it's just like, as you can see there, it's like, you know, there's an arrow. No shit, sure, that's where they go. But where do they go? How do they fit? I, I cannot tell. One thing I did notice is in the back here... There is, I'm not sure if you can see it, there is like a tiny little radius cutout in the plastic there. Make sure you don't fill that with filler or Mr. Surfacer because I've got a feeling the legs are going to sit down and they're going to slot into a gap in the wing there and then sit in that little pin. So I do know from my experience with, you know, with chatting to Paul and stuff and when he was doing his tornadoes and that, Ravel undercarriages and the, the, the placement, I mean, it's like... I don't know where that's going to go. Well, there's a hole there. So we've got a hole there where that that, that rear leg's going to go there. But for the front, I just hope it becomes more obvious when we get to it. Anyway, right. Um, so moving on, while that's dry, because we want that to be nice and rock hard, what we're going to do is look at these wing lights. You've got the landing lights. So we've got the parts here. We've got 125 and 126. So obviously this is the light. And they're telling us to paint this in like a chrome colour. And we're actually saying C, which is, I believe, silver, isn't it? C is silver metallic. Well, it needs to be chrome, same as that, hood, that leg on the actuator there. So um, we're going to do it chrome. So we'll spray it first with a gloss black, and then we'll spray it with a super metallic. Um, we're not a super metallic. The sparkling silver is it LP38. Is it LP38? No, that's flat aluminium. LP38, one of the... Um, here we go, LP48, sparkling silver, uh, and that gives you a very nice uh, chrome effect. If not, we could use the Alclad on there. Um, and we'll do the lights as well at the same time as them, and that's all our chrome taken care of then. Uh, actually, we may have some chrome to do on the undercarriage legs, so we'll look at that as well. Uh, so we're going to look at doing these lights. Now, they're telling us here to fit the light into there, and then fit that assembly into the lower wing. I don't want to do that, because what I want to do is fit that assembly into the lower wing, fit the wings together, deal with the seam, and then put the light in, rather than have the light in there. So I've got the parts off the sprue once again. So we can go over the page and get these parts out. So we got here, you can see I've got the, got the lights here and they're all cleaned up. I'm guessing the back of them would be like a brown color. I'll have to have a look. If the front's chrome and it's a glass dome, I'm guessing the back would be like a brown colour. Uh, we've got those two actuators there, so they're going to get painted gloss black. So we'll put those in the bag so we don't lose them. Just quickly, we'll put those in the bag. And that we can put the bag to us. Good hand. It's handy to have a little bag to work with. And then we've got our lower wings here cut off. I'm also going to look at uh, opening up these ejector chutes for the guns as well. So we'll look at how we're going to do that. Um, basically, these parts, you can't get them wrong. They won't physically go in the wrong side. So that's a good bit of design work there. So that's just going to sit in there. And that just sits there. So we can come along with that extra thin quick setting and just put some around there. And that will hold that in place. Do the same on this one. Just like so, and that will hold that in place. Okay, and then I'm going to go around the edge just to give it something to bite on. Just like so. Make sure it's all nicely aligned in there. 
and there we go that's in same with that one so giving it a push and there's some glue oozing out there we'll just scrape that off afterwards but we do actually have clear lenses to go on there and I did notice on this masking set we've actually got um, masks for the inside and the outside of the landing light covers so uh, that's a good idea but I don't think we'll be using the inside ones um, and then the next thing we're going to do is add our wings I believe yeah we're going to add the lower wings to the center spar now what I'm going to do is see if I can get away with adding the top wings and then we can work on these seams and then add them to the spar uh, I did dry fit one of these wings and as you can see they go on nice and tight but you can see it's broken the pins off that tight so um, that's something to be wary of so uh, anyway and there's the broken pin still in there look so we could always drill it and put something in there um, if, if we need to so we've done that bit there, so I'm going to let this dry and um, and then hopefully be able to add the upper wing on and then we can deal with the, the seams if we need to. I'm not sure we're going to need to actually. And paint that green once it's all in and the seam work is all done and then just drop the light in afterwards rather than do it the way they're suggesting. Okay, so a discovery I've made here through making a cock up. If you have these pins in place when you come to fit the wing, you can't set the dihedral because the pins pull it all about. So there's no real way. You can see you've got lots of play in there. You can't really set it. And then you're supposed to glue the top wing on and then work with it all as assembly. But if I take that off, you see I've got that off without breaking any of the pins. What I found with no pins on there, you can assemble the wing like so and that way we can drop something down in there as well because one of the problems with cheaper kits if you look at the airfix the wing is absolutely solid you can't flex it but with the cheaper kits where there's nothing in the wing you can see you can you can squeeze it in the middle and what happens is they'll crack if you pick the aircraft up like that say you can crack the seams so it's a good thing to have something in there now I want to open up these ejector ports as well so we'll do that in a minute but um, what I'd rather do is assemble the wing, work on the seams and everything, get all these bits in and have it all done. And then we can literally slot this on at the same time as we put the wing box in the fuselage. And therefore we can make sure we can concentrate on this seam here rather than concentrate on having it all fitted into there. But you can see that without those pins, I can slot that into there. I just did it with the camera off and it went really easy. There you go slot that into there and then when it comes to fitting the fuselage it can just drop down on top or we could fit the wing box to the fuselage and then fit the wings probably easier to do it that the way I first said is just clip the wings into there and then you know have that as a secondary joint and concentrate on this one so um, I'm going to assemble the wings off of that wig but the first thing I'm going to do is deal with these ejector chutes and open them up all right so I'm going to open up these ejector chutes um, and what I've done, if you hold it up to a light, grab a light source, I should be able to show you. If you hold your parts up to a light, you can see there that you can see through. You can see through the part and we can see where those ejector shoots are. So you can then mark up with a with a pen just where they are. And then I'm going to come in with a this is called a burr. Okay, I'm just literally So you can see we've literally thinned the plastic out and now we should, if we grab the light again, I shouldn't have put it away, should I? We grab the light again, as you can see now, we've got a definite light behind there. 
we can just keep grinding until we see the just keep grinding until we see the pattern coming through Notice I'm using the lower speed. If you use high speeds, you can melt the plastic. But we can see now that we're actually starting to break through. So we can, with like a toothpick, don't use anything sharp. Just push that through, just like so. Come over to the other side, push it through if you like. And we can see that we need to remove some plastic from the front end. So. And the reason I'm doing it this way rather than just drilling them through is this also thins the wing out, wing out and it makes it look a lot more authentic. You can see now, if you, use, if you don't use something sharp you can retain the shape without causing any damage. If you go in there with a knife you're likely to change the shape of the rectangle. So there's that. You can see now we've got our shoots in there all nicely done and if we come along tummy extra thin dry the brush right off so there's hardly anything on there and then just run around each one like that you can see how neat and tidy it becomes and you've got a nice thin section there rather than the great thick wedge so it makes it look a lot more accurate just paint the inside of the wing black and it'll look great underneath rather than Having that slab of plastic, you can see the difference. It looks so much better. All right, so we got the wings <clears throat> glued together, painted inside black, as you can see in there. And then you can see with the ammo shoots open, it just looks so much better when you look at it from underneath. So got the wings glued together and taped up. Um, there's no positive location uh, for the wings left to right, so you need to be a little bit careful. And I've basically used the panel lines and these openings to line everything up. And you've also got the opening there for the ailerons. So um, just really hope for the best, you know. Um, it could be worth sticking to the plan they have in the instructions about putting the lower wing on and adding the top, uh, if you like. But I'd rather do it this way and then I can sort of basically fettle to fit into the uh, fuselage. Um, so with the wings together, I'm now looking at these because it's going to be much easier to hold this than a whole assembly. And there's going to be some sanding and filling required around these um, around these gun openings. So basically, you can see this one here. I, I think I will drill these. I may drill them completely out and put some brass in there. But you can see they they want to go in and they easily fall through. So I would really recommend doing this before you attach the wing to your fuselage because they're going to be very difficult. And then what I'm going to do is just to get it just to nip into place. I'm just going to put a drop of super glue in the top. I'm going to use super glue as a filler anyway. That's just to kind of hold it and then that will capillary around as you can see there. Because this is the this is the VMS black thin again. It's bloody brilliant stuff. Um, and just sort of basically work it around so that the top looks good. So we don't have to put too much work into getting it blended into the wing. As you can see, it just sort of sits in there. It's not very positive. And on the bottom there, you know, that's going to be easy. Just We'll just fill that up. Come on. Go into the bloody joint. It just wants to sit out of the side. There we go. Got more on the outside than I have on the inside. Just grab a cotton bird and just remove that excess from there saves having to do loads of sanding later on I know what it is my yeah uh, my glue looper needs cleaning it's too big of a lump okay so that should just dry and just hold that in place and then we can get some weld action cement in there it's just to uh, 
here this super glue doesn't dry instantly so it's really fun to work or not fun well it is fun it's good to work with so you can get that position like that and get it all nicely blended in as you can see and then the same here with this one you've got the machine gun ports and that's going to go in see it just wants to fall in there's no there's no real positive location for it so it's not the best design but it's what we've got so just put some super glue on there and on there and it's actually a very good fit to be honest but it just it, it's just literally placed in a hole it's not fitting at all So there we go, and as, as you can tell with this, with these, unlike the Spitfire, I'm only covering bits in here that I think need some attention or something that the newer modelers would appreciate. So I've got that held in there now with, with four dabs on each one of super glue, and then what we'll do is let that let that just dry, and then we'll put some weld action in there so you get a good weld action into the wing, and then we'll fill it with super glue and sand it, and if we have to rescribe it, we will. But um. I have to be careful not to affect those guns. I may actually replace those with some brass tube. We shall see. So I'll get the other side done. Oh, the other thing, I've got the undercarriage legs off to do the chrome on the bottom. And notice they got each one's got a couple of ejector pin marks in the um, in the rearward face. So you might decide to leave them. But basically, the undercarriage drawer is going to go there, and you'll see those ejector pin marks. So you may as well fill them, get them off, and fill them. So uh, I'm going to get those others in. And then I'll come back when I've got it all welded and it's all dry. So since you saw me last, um, <clears throat> those panels have all been blended in now, all sanded around. Uh, got the leading edge all sanded in, redone all the panel lines on there. So that's all done. Um, and I fitted this forward section here so I'm able to check the fit of the wings. And it's surprisingly nice. And you'll notice here, this frame, this part of the cockpit that has fallen out, and I've just been trying to get it back in and it, I can get it back in and I'm thinking, well, what's the bloody point? It's behind the pilot seat. It goes in here. So it's behind the pilot seat and you can't see it at all. It's behind the armour. The only way you're going to see it is if you look up inside. Well, you're not going to be able to look up inside because there's going to be a, a big um, radio going in there. So I don't really see the point in having it. So uh, I won't throw it away. I'll keep it here to the side. But... um. Very strange, but having these wings being able to slide in and out, I think makes life a lot easier. What's very interesting, on the side where we still have the pins, it doesn't break any of the pins off. So there's obviously something going on with the moulding where one side is better than the other, I don't know. But um, what I'm going to do here is just grab some tape rub some masking tape and tape these wings in here so pull that across there I'm gonna pull that across there okay and then as we can see this drops on here beautifully now I have done a little bit of fettling I've removed oh, dear, this panel keeps pulling up and out it really happens because the camera's on. I think what I'll do is get another bit of tape on there and pull that around to there. Do the same on the other side. This is what happens when you use secondhand tape, it's bloody awful. So we can pull that up onto there. I've put that piece of tape in the way of the wing root. So we can pull that around to there. There we go. Right. So hopefully that'll stay as one now. Um, so we've got these two little tabs on here and they go into those slots on there so that sort of pulls the wing in but what I was telling you I've sanded some material from here and from here to get it to fit together and because what was happening was as I was pushing it in I was seeing a gap here on both sides so I've just narrowed that front fairing bit down to get a better fit and a better fit it surely is it's um you can hear it all clicking together it's really nice 
So you can see there without any glue, without any pulling about. It's bloody lovely. It really is very, very nice indeed. So um, I'm sort of tempted to glue the wings into that centre spar now. I was a bit worried about suffering a bad fit, but uh, I don't think I'm going to suffer that at all because it's just, it's not sort of pulling anything about. It just, it just falls together. It's lovely. So um, there we are. Um, I don't have anything else to say. Obviously sanding here, be careful about those guns. I've made the hole there for the gun camera. Uh, but I'm going to give all this a coat of primer to see how it looks. And then obviously go back and do any work. I have scribed a line around here. There's a line on the outside of those gun panels. I don't think there's any scribe, scribe panels to do on there. And I don't think there's any scribing to do around there. So I'm not going to bother. Um, we've got to fit that gun sight, but I'm going to make sure the leading edge of the wing is all sanded and blended first before we do that. So I think I'm going to glue this wing together. You've got a nice big contact area on the top of that spar there. And then we can get in and paint the undercarriage bay, give it a final proper coat, and then remove those masks and we're done. We must remember to move those masks on the inside before we bolt this up to the fuselage. So, um, so there we go. But as you can see, it's just click, 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 and it just falls together. So, really chuffed for that. Well done, Ravel. So, it's been a few hours since my last little segment. Uh, I can't remember where I left you, but I've basically glued the wings together, gone round these with um, super glue, painted the inner areas here in silver, painted this area here in silver. Uh, I've got to do these um, tips now. In the instructions, they're telling you to paint the lenses green and red. I think actually the bulbs were green and red and the actual lenses were clear, but I need to do some more research. They're also telling you to paint this area in here, in the interior green. Um, but I've got a feeling this is going to be aluminium. Well, aluminium paint and the same in there because all of this wing box area here is aluminium. So why would, you know, why would they paint this green? The spars, aluminium here, why paint it green there? So I think it should, probably should be, I've done some research on, um, on Google and I found images that basically say that that should be, that they look like they're silver. Um, I've done some painting, we've got our landing lights there in the chrome, that's Alclad chrome paint there, so you can see they're nice and shiny. Um, and I've also done the bases of the undercarriage legs. So you can see there if the camera will focus. So they're all nice and shiny as well as a couple of actuators up there as well I've done in the chrome. So uh, there we go. And also the end of those little actuators here which go in across the uh, across the main spar. So um, basically bit of fettling. Sanding on here, sanding on here, um, getting it all together. I, I can't remember if I already told you that bit. But what I'm finding is the, the fit is absolutely lovely. So what I want to do now is actually fit these wings to the um is that right yeah that's right isn't it to the actual center section so the plan here is to basically get this fitted up and all clamped in place with some pegs and everything and get it all fitted up because we've got that spar running into the wing there so we can clamp that and that gives us some rigidity in the wing and remember I said about this squeezing and it'll break so we, we've got rid of that basically so get that in like that get the other wing in now this has still got the the pins in it it's funny one side is, is like a prick in the top hat the other side was so tight it broke all the the pins off we'll get this one in here clamp that on there okay and now what we can do is put this this center piece in I already painted the inside of that silver and that's got that locks into those pins in the actual wing itself but if you do that you can't glue those spars in so my suggestion is to put this in have this in here fitted and everything <laughs> there's obviously a fox outside or something so have that fitted like that. I'm going to grab a couple of bits of tape, which are fresh. Okay, and I'm going to take that into there so the wing can't pull out. 
take that into there again so the wind can't pull out and I'm going to take these off take that piece out and then clamp it there onto that spar and now we can get in there and we can glue that spar as you can see in here we can get inside and glue that spar to the upper wing and it will be uh, nice and solid then so and I know that with it like this the fuselage fits beautifully so um that's what we're going to do in fact I'm going to move that peg further inboard and that one to get rid of the play there we go that's more firm now so um that's what I'm do. just put some glue in there let it go off overnight and then we'll come and have a look at it in the morning but I think in the morning is going to be the next video for you because I think we're up to over well, let's get this done and then we'll call it a day then okay so our wings been drying for a while now happy with that so we can take the pegs off I've glued this panel in under here um, basically got some Tamiya tape on there just to hold that while the glue cures so now we've got a nice uh, a nice well glued seam along that leading edge there in here I've gone around with a brush and just gone over these areas again with some Mr Surfacer just to make a final check and I've gone around here with Mr Surfacer and I can see here straight away where's my round blade we've got a little bit of glue see that there that is, see that there where the end of the knife is, that's glue oozing out. So we just cut that away because that, when we come to do the, there we go, when we come to do the uh, the thinners to, to remove the excess and leave a panel line behind, then the glue won't disappear. So we, we've done that now, that's gone. So uh, we may do another application on there because you can see it's sinking in quite deeply because there's nothing really behind it it's just like a butt joint with those little flanges that went over those clips so um we're kind of ready to put this on the fuselage don't worry i haven't forgot those bits of mask um but i want to work on the leading edge and get the landing lights fitted and everything before i start sort of getting all this together on the on the fuselage but we can see here that it's all going to fit absolutely lovely yeah, hold the trailing edge down, hold the leading edge in. There we go. We can see we've got a lovely fit. We need to do a little bit of sanding on there to blend that in because that's not so that's not so good there, is it? Um, that'll be absolutely fine. And then we've got the same on this one. So a little bit of blending. I mean, it's you think of all the compound angles they've got there, and they've got to make it as a kit with separate parts to assemble. It's amazing that they get it as good as they do, really. But uh, we'll sand all that out and we'll get that blended and obviously do some before we put the wing on. But um, I've got to sand these joints here, just do a little Mr. Surfacer check on them. We're going to need a tiny bit of Mr. Surfacer in there, look. Same in there. Okay. And then um, Mr. Surfacer over the top with a cotton bud afterwards. And we will be done. So... Yeah, if I give it a good squeeze and a good, there you go. If I give that a good push down, you can see it improves the fit in there a lot. But uh, I think what we'll do the same as we did with our 124 Spitfire, we'll get the end of the wings pulled up to tighten that joint up. But I must be honest, these wings are amazingly strong now. That is incredibly strong. So uh, much stronger than I thought it would be. And we don't have any issues with the wing compressing because I didn't realize we had those spars going into there. So it's pretty good actually. So um, there we are. So that is our wing done. We're ready to get sanding on there. I'm going to wait for that glue to completely solidify. I'm going to put some more Mr. Surfacer in there. Go around with the cotton bud, take that off. I'm going to put the landing lights in. As I showed you, the, I've showed you the landing lights already. They're looking lovely. They're just silver on the back. And we've got that chrome effect. It's clad chrome over gloss black on the front. And then we're going to put them in, paint the bulbs. And then we're going to fit the clear parts. The clear parts are in here. They fit really nicely and then we've got our art scale masks to go on them. We've got the inside and the outside masks, but I really don't see why we would need the inner and outer. You can see that fits in there. Gorgeous. So we'll glue that in and then ground Mr. Surfacer and then Cotton Bud. And uh, you can see they fit absolutely perfectly in there. Um, well, that one does anyway, the other one's just as good. But we'll glue them in with that extra thin. I don't like to use any other glue on my clear parts. 
I'll blend it in, blend the framework in, and then we'll grab some Mr. Surfacer and then wipe it over the cotton bud. Where did that piece go? I will find it in a minute. And uh, and there we go. So if that piece went on the floor, I've lost them both now. Well, there's one still in there, so I've lost one. One's probably on the floor. Let me find it before I continue. Great, I found it. That's one of the good things about recording modeling. When you do drop something, you can tend to see where it goes. I remember or oh, back last year sometime I lost something and I was sure I saw it go that way and I watched and, and I watched the video back at really slow motion and I saw it where it bounced and it ended up over there. So it went over there and it was it was a tiny tiny part and I found it. So uh, yeah, good. So um yeah, as I said, I'm going to go over here with some um, leveling thinners just to remove the excess. I'll probably put some more on before I do that. I will sand all this out. I will paint inside these areas here, paint inside these areas here. And then I think what we'll do is we'll come back then in part three, because uh, as I said, I think this has been going on for about an hour now. And we'll come back in part three and we'll get all these clear parts glued in or I'll get them glued in in the meantime. And then we'll go from there. But here, some nasty seams in there to deal with. Uh, so pay some attention to that because it's going to be visible through the through the clear wingtip lights um, And then we'll paint in there silver. We'll put some clear red clear green paint in there. So they look like bulbs. We'll put some um, They tell us in the instructions to paint the bulbs white. I may do like a, a darker silver color or something Because uh, some of the older bulbs had like a gray like a gray brown reflector over the end didn't they? Um, so we'll have a look at that um, and we'll go from there. And, uh, and and as I said, we've got the mask to go on and then we can get the wing fitted, get all this sanded out, get this joint done. And we're going to be, it's just going to be a case of doing the tailplanes and then we're into paint. Really, it's, it, there's not much else to do. There's, we've got the flaps and the ailerons to do, tail feathers. That's it. So uh, it won't be much longer, guys, and this one will be done. You'll be pleased to know. So I'll see you all soon for part three. Thank you for watching. Um, this one was a bit more involved than doing this bit, the part one. Uh, basically because I think there's a lot in here to be sort of aware of and careful of that um, could really throw you off. So I thought I'd basically cover what the things that I found and what I've done and how I've clamped it and how I've held it all down. And I've ended up with a lovely straight, very, very true, nice sort of even dihedral. You can see that I can slide that knife under there and it just sort of touches the wingtip. It's exactly the same there. So got it all nice and even nice and level everything's good um whether you need to worry about what i did with pushing the wings in and not using those clips i don't know uh, i really don't know but i really would recommend not gluing that in until you've got the wings glued on solid onto those spars because once you've got that in it's going to be very difficult to get glued down into here into there which is where you want it to go so i've waffled enough i'll see you all soon for part three thanks for watching and bye for now